Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about computer science. So let's get into it. So the questioning question in question was, Frederick, I understand your points about machine learning, but generally what about computer science? If you taught yourself how to build things with software and just using higher level technologies, do you think it's worth in the long term investing the time to learn the fundamentals of computer science? Yes. Yes, I would say that that is ex it, it is definitely worth the investment. And the reason is very simple because if you uh, the uh, at the very least the basics of computer science is something that I think is extraordinarily important. Now, the problem with going down the path of mastering computer science is that there is this uh, what I like to call the 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 pragmatic cutoff point where you're actually getting some type of return on investment of the software that you write. If you go into something like say competitive coding, you will find that maybe a small portion of the knowledge that is required for you to enter certain competitions or to do certain exercises is going to be useful to you. An example would be big O notations, runtime complexity, space uh, space complexity etc etc to understand how the code that you are writing is affecting things like memory usage and execution speed now in the vast majority of situations that is going to be enough for you to do your everyday job as a software developer but in the competitions you will find that there are people who are very 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 smart who focuses that usually you focus more on optimizing these things and that's sort of where this idea of premature optimization comes in i've seen some code that is absolutely genius where they can they can boil down a uh, a n cubed problem or a factorial problem down to something that works in constant time or in linear time or something really good like that but the code and the knowledge that was required like the code is usually like it's basically arcane to the average software developer so it's an example of something that we also talk about which is is this legacy or is it over is it premature optimization etc etc we have i can have other videos about where we talk about like when is highly optimized code the way to go one way and it's not but uh, even even so let's just talk about the knowledge that was required most a lot of these software uh, computer scientists they are not just programmers guys they have an understanding of a lot of different concepts everything from mathematics and so like a more in-depth understanding of mathematics and so forth and so writing the and that you have to remember the the goal of these sorts of exercises is to write something that focuses primarily on performance in some fashion that is always the case it's not a competition in writing understandable software with that said these these building blocks like that is the core of what you do and understanding the underlying data structures and understanding how execution times and maximary usage and how the stack works and the heap and so forth these are things that are extremely important for you to understand you because you don't really know like you you know how to write software if you don't learn these things but you don't really know what the software is doing if that makes sense you don't you don't like i like to say that uh, I don't think that you have to be a C developer per se, but I think that you should take at least one basic course in C at some point in your life and start, uh, if you're, let's say you're only working in Python or Java or C Sharp or something like that, and just learn how the bare, like the basic building blocks of the computer works, because it helps you understand the impact of the choices that you are making in the software that you are writing. I'm not saying that just because you take a computer science course, you you need to go crazy and start thinking about big O notations every time you write a piece of code. But I can tell you from uh, from experience that there's more than a few occasions where we have I've found production bugs or issues related to either somebody not knowing or somebody forgetting to think about certain optimizations. An example, a concrete one was uh, 
we had an algorithm where the developer had written a very simple filtering out uh, filtering function it was the sim most simple thing in the world it just it uh, sorted a list of elements and then filtered out the stuff that was unneeded and it was extraordinarily unperformant and the reason was because the data set that was going to go through that thing was enormous it was millions and millions and millions of records and by simply again in this case like we didn't even do like the best optimization we could have done and which is as i was saying that's a different video to talk about when is it valid to actually do these really really optimized solutions uh, but all we really did was to flip the sorting and the filtering because if we did the filtering before the sorting the sorting algorithm was actually cheaper which actually helped us in terms of execution time because the sorting was is more expensive and that simple little tweak was it, 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 it reduced the complex the the, execu uh, the time complexity of the problem uh, enough so that the algorithm was running fairly effectively and in many cases you will find that some data structures like maps and sets and lists, arrays, etc., etc. These are things that you are using every single day, and it's a good investment for you to understand how these things actually work at the theoretical level. So I th I really do believe that learning the fundamentals of computer science is something that should definitely be on your to-do list. You don't have to go into like the higher level stuff because guys, there are data structures that are super specific. You're never going to implement them, or and it's very unlikely that you will even ever consume some of these data structures. But I'm also a very firm believer in understanding at the high level all the tools of the trade, or at least as many as possible, so that you kind of grasp the the key benefits and way offs with these tools, so that you can th call upon that knowledge when the time arises. Some tools you use every day, like you probably are using list every single day, arrays every single day, etc, etc. But you might not use a binary search tree uh, to take a simple thing. That's not something you use every day. But understanding how one, what one is and when it's useful, well, you don't have to remember how to implement the whole thing and like, completely optimize it perfectly. You just have to understand what it is and you have to understand when it's a good idea to use it so that when you face a problem that you don't really have a good handle on with your arrays or your other data structures you can remember hey you know what this problem is sort of that problem and I know that something like a binary search tree or something like that is actually very good at this thing maybe I should go and read up on that thing again and see if I can solve it using that thing because if you know about the thing then it's part of your toolbox. It doesn't have to be the thing that you're using all the time. So what I want you to take away from this is that I strongly suggest that if you've learned the basics of software development, if you can write code or whatever, take one, just take one introduction to computer science type of course or like go oh, there's many good videos on something like free code camp or uh, Udacity, Udemy, etc, etc, where you just get the introduction to algorithms, big O notations, etc, etc. And that is for most of you going to be, it's going to help you. It's going to help you understand how to think about effective software and so forth. It's going to teach you a few things about um, complexity and so forth. I also recommend if if you if you want to go deeper, you can go in thing, into things like competitive programming or do lead code exercises. There are many, many of these um, cat, uh, caddies and so forth uh, platforms where you can take some of these problems and you will start to realize that the some of the, a lot of the solutions in competitive coding are very optimized. They're very good at figuring out something like the big O notations, but the it might not be the sort of code that you're writing at your job. But it's still interesting to see how you can solve different problems using different techniques. And that's the thing I really want you to focus on. By learning basic computer science, you will expand your understanding of the tools available to you to you they don't have to be something that's in the back of your spine that you know like that it just has to be something that you can remember hey 
that thing there that I read about might be relevant into my situation and then go and read up on it again, relearn it so that you can solve your problems because at the end of the day that's all it is. This knowledge is just there to help you solve the problems that you are facing. It's not something that you have to learn, it's just very useful to learn. Have a great day.